What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods here, and I'm coming at you with our first NFL pros prospect breakdown here for the 2022 NFL Draft. And I really wanted to create this segment mainly to highlight some of the top FCS players in the upcoming NFL Draft because a lot of these other channels are doing breakdowns on the top FBS prospects, which we're going to get to some of my favorite there. But I really wanted to highlight some of my top F FCS prospects in this draft, put the light on them for once, and give you guys an inside look on what I'm seeing in some of these top prospects. And I didn't think there was an any there was any better of a start point than a prospect that I think is the most intriguing draft prospect in this year's class. And there's been some people who have compared this kid to Luke Keekley to athletically Isaiah Simmons uh, coming out of Clemson just just a little while back. But that is Troy Anderson from Montana State. We're gonna kick it off here. Make sure to like the like the stream uh, like the show and subscribe right now. But Getting into Troy Anderson's career, he had a very unique path to where to, to get where he is today. Starting out as a quarterback slash running back for Montana State, putting up crazy numbers, being a first team All American on the offensive side of the ball, then switching to outside, then eventually middle linebacker for this Montana State team and being arguably one of the best defensive players in the entire country. And it just shows how athletically gifted this kid really is. And just to highlight some of the awards and notable achievements that he had at Montana State, he was the FCS AD ADA Defensive Player of the Year this year, the Big Sky Defensive Player of the Year. Two-time FCS first-team All-American in 19 and 21, was a freshman All-American and the Big Sky Freshman of the Year, is a three-time All-Big Sky selection, 18, 19, and 2021. And just to highlight how dominant he was on the other side of the football, he is the second all-time leader at Montana State with 33 rushing touchdowns for a career. And when you look at what records he holds for the season, He's the season record holder for rushing touchdowns in a year with 21 yards per carry at 6.85 for a year, 100 yard rushing games at nine, consecutive 100 yard rushing games at six, and points scored at a season with 128. That is what Troy Anderson is bringing you on, on a weekly basis for Montana State in a yearly basis at multiple different positions. And you've really you've really seen him over these past two seasons grow into the defensive leader that NFL scouts and teams are going to fall in love with in the draft process. And looking at the combine and what he did at the Senior Bowl, too, I want to mention that. I got, I got to go down there and cover the Senior Bowl in Mobile, Alabama. He won the National Team Linebacker of the Week Award, which was voted on by his peers, which just shows how talented he really is when he steps on a football field. But at the combine, he it, it was made for people like Troy Anderson. I was going in and I told everyone on the live stream, if you've seen Troy Anderson play, you knew the combine was where it was literally going to be his playground because at, at, for his size it's six three and a half 243 is what he measured in, in indianapolis he runs a four four two official number one among linebackers has a 36 vert and a broad jump of 10 8 which is top five am among linebackers at the nfl combine so that is what that, that is what troy anderson is bringing you which is just hyper athleticism and just pure size for a, for a linebacker that you usually don't see linebackers are not built like him and as athletic as he is and I think when you saw him in the drills, how fluid he moved and just how smoothly he he operated, I really think you got to see a glimpse into what made Troy Anderson such a special player. And, you know, I pulled a little bit of film here from his time at Montana State. And let me get the overlay out of the way. And this film really, I think, is going to exemplify what I think his strengths are, which we'll get in after this. But you're going to see him here. And he's right here on the outside. He's going to fight off a block by a pulling tackle and just make the play on the edge. And what his what his athletic ability allows him to do is flow with the play. And when he knows where he's going, his speed and acceleration is going to beat the blocker to the point. You're going to have to take an exceptional angle 
to catch Troy Anderson if you're an offensive lineman when you're trying to get around him or set the edge. And he can just outrun you to the point. And I think you saw that there in that Sam Houston game where they put on a dominant performance on their way to the FCS National Championship this season. Here's another play. As a blitzer, he is going to be a problem. If you don't pick him up, he is going to get to the quarterback. And you're just going to see here they overwhelm this offensive line with too many people. And Troy Anderson is too fast for the quarterback to react whatsoever. Comes untouched, and there's just nothing you can do. When Troy Anderson is coming at you at that speed, there is absolutely nothing you can do there. And then this play right here, man, this is what I'm talking about where he is just so patient to the point and he just gets there and when he gets there he makes you pay forces to fumble and and montana gets the ball back and right here the the patience and the speed that he that he takes to get to the edge against south care against south dakota state to get this running back from hitting the edge on a fourth and one in a, in a crucial playoff opportunity with national championship implications on the line he gets to the edge and i mean he he gets a little sucked in there but right here, the, the running back has the angle. He should be able to get the first down. Troy Anderson has other ideas, makes the great open field tackle. And that's what I'm going to talk about in my strengths is how sure of a tackler that he really is in open space. He does not miss a lot of tackles. And right here again, another excellent show of how you can use him in multiple different areas. He's way out here. I mean, he's covering he's covering this receiver pretty much, but they're going to bring him on a just a hard blitz. And look at the ground that he makes up on this play right here. They're going to snap it, and I mean, he just he gets to the. I mean, the quarterback has a dump off, and with his long arms, he was either going to knock it down or get to the quarterback, and he gets to the quarterback before he even has a chance to make a decision. And that is the type of speed that you are going to get with Troy Anderson, and it. it it honestly changes the game. You have to game plan for him. Again, right here, fights off a guy, keeps his balance, and makes the tackle in open field. He gets a very athletic wide receiver on the screen. And even after he got chipped, he still beat the secondary blocker to the spot to, to make the play. And then right here, this is just him flying to the ball. You see right there, meets him in the hole, helmet comes off, big play. Troy Anderson is not going to be denied there in the slightest. And then right here, this is the speed. Listen, okay, bad coverage. I, I understand this is bad coverage. We'll kind of get into, you know, some of the things he needs to work on. He gets caught looking inside. It's kind of a pick play. But this guy should be to the house. And Troy Anderson hawks him down and, and almost forces to fumble, makes a good play. And this is just some clips. This is his 40-yard dash at the NFL Combine. This guy is moving at 6'3 and a half, 240. He is flying. It was a 4-4-1 unofficial. And then here is just some of the fluidity in his movement that I was talking about, too. He he just looks like an athlete, and, and there's there's you can't take away anything from him. He is just so fluid with his movement. The number one thing I want to see is just him recognize where he should be in open field because he is a he is new to the position. And so as we get into his strengths, that's just some of the clips that I think exemplify some of these strengths. First off, he's he has elite speed for a linebacker. To be running a 4-4 as a Mike linebacker at his size, that is elite speed. And so what you're going to get is a lot of athleticism if you draft a Troy Anderson. And that's one of his biggest strengths and also his size to go along with that. At 6'3 and a half, 240, he's not going to be overpowered easily. He's able to take on blocks from the offensive line. He's able to overtake running backs on blitzes. His size and combination of speed really are some of his biggest strengths. And on those clips, too, excellent tackler in open space is one of the big strengths that I put down when watching, when breaking down his film. He does not miss a lot of tackles. If he gets his hands on you, you're probably coming down. And that that is invaluable when looking at linebackers because a missed tackle here or there can spring big plays in the NFL. It is a you do not have a lot of room for error when it comes to that. Also, toughness and motor, and this will play hand-in-hand in hand with the weakness I'm going to talk about in a second, but Anderson really did play through some injuries. I was reading some reports and, and some of the, the um, insider things from Montana State, and there were a lot of games where a lot of people thought he was banged up and he played through it. He kept his speed. There were some talks about the Sam Houston game, the national championship this year that he played through. Toughness is a big plus 
for Troy Anderson and also his motor. His motor is a is 110 every single play. And I think you see that in the highlights. If he's coming downhill, he's coming to hit somebody and he's coming to make a play. So his toughness and motor go hand in hand. I think those are some big strengths as well. And then also playing sideline to sideline is a big thing for Troy Anderson. And it goes along with the speed and athleticism that he has. But he's but even if you maybe catch him out of position, he's going to be able to make it up on the back end because he's so fast, because he's so athletic. And so playing sideline to sideline, which is what you want in a linebacker, similar to like a Kobe Dean or Isaiah Simmons did for Clemson and or Georgia at the, at the FBS level, playing sideline to sideline, knowing which gap you need to fill and getting to the outside and cutting off the edge for the running back before he gets around the corner is a big thing. And his athleticism allows him to play sideline to sideline very, very well. Also, fluidity in his hips is the last strength here and movements. He just looks like he knows what he's doing in the open field. He can flip his hips well. He can move. He doesn't get out of balance very easily. He never really looks lost out there. So for me, the fluidity in his movements and him just being an athlete really helps. And that goes back to his running back days and his quarterback days for Montana State. Now, for the weaknesses in Troy Anderson, and, and listen, I don't want anyone to, you know, think anyone's being too hard or anything. Every player's going to have a weakness. Even when I do Evan Neal, who might be the first pick in the draft, he's going to have some weaknesses too. For me, the number one weakness for Anderson is it, it's a, it's a weird, it's a weird weakness, but it's, this is an experience at the linebacker spot. He's going up against guys who have played the linebacker spot their whole career. They have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years at the linebacker spot. So their fundamental understanding of the position is a little bit higher just naturally than than Anderson. So sometimes you're going to catch him, you know, maybe, maybe thinking a little bit more about what he's doing and he's just a half a second late somewhere. But in college, to make that up speed, let us that's that's something I really want to see him work on. And it's going to come with the position as he gets into the NFL, as he works with with you know the backups of the practice squad. Cause I don't think he'll be an immediate starter at the NFL level, but I do think as he gets some film study in, as he gets to the next level, that will become a strength for him because he is a really, really smart kid, great kid off the field. But right now, his inexperience at the linebacker spot really is a concerning part of his NFL draft profile right now. Also, this could be because he's just that fast and athletic. Sometimes he just takes poor angles. He looks at it as like he can catch up to you or he can make the play coming from a weird angle. He's going to have to work on that because if you can get a very athletic running back and or an offensive lineman be in the right spot, that poor angle is going to cost Troy Anderson at times. And he was able to overcome it at the college level. But poor angles are a thing that you see sometimes in film. And if you're not in the right spot or you take a poor angle, that running back, wide receiver, et cetera, is going to make you pay. So poor angles at times are one of his weaknesses right this second. And also, his final his final big weakness. I don't want to you know pick anyone apart, but sometimes he can be too patient. A little bit of patience, knowing where to go, is okay. But sometimes I feel like he's a second or two late getting to where he needs to be. And I I think you kind of saw that in the North Dakota State game where he kind of hung around into the box too long, and one of those big offensive linemen got their hands on him, and they were able to they were able to move him out of the way. But there were times where if he can just if he reads it appropriately, sometimes he just second guesses himself as the best way to put it is what I imagine. And that goes back to the inexperience at the linebacker spot. I think sometimes he reads it and knows where he should go and he just second guesses himself. And that half a second second that he waits could cost him in a few plays. So I want him to be more confident in himself knowing where to go. If you see it, Get after it. Get to the gap you need to go. Shoot the gap. Know where you need to be. And that's a that's that's one of the things for Troy Anderson. Then also, his long arms usually keep offensive linemen off of him. But if you get engaged with him, he he can struggle at times to get off the block. You saw that a little bit in the FCS National Championship. But I think that's going to come with playing linebacker more often and really understanding where to be and 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 some moves to get around, but he dominated tight ends and one-on-ones at the senior bowl. He used his athleticism. He had a, a beautiful spin move on, I believe Charlie Kohler from Iowa state where he just spun back into the pocket and Charlie Kohler had no idea. So I think him understanding how to use his athleticism when he's engaged with a real physical offensive lineman 
is probably the next step in his evolution as a linebacker. But ultimately, man, this kid is so promising, and I think he's one of the more interesting NFL draft prospects that we have in this class. But for NFL draft projections, if he was a multi-year linebacker where he had all this experience, I think I could draft him, you know, probably second round or so. But just in pure athleticism and inexperience, I think teams are going to take a step back. I think his high... I guess his ceiling right now would probably be third round for me. I think where you're probably going to see Troy Anderson's name come off the board is probably the fourth round. I would give him a third to fifth round grade in terms of prospects in the NFL draft. But I think this kid could be an absolute sleeper for a team if he goes to the right situation and progresses like I think he can. But teams are going to get a raw athlete that I think they can mold into the linebacker that they want. And I also really hope they give him some awesome – um, situational snaps in the red zone as like a wildcat quarterback or something like that because he can use his side of speed to get to the corner and make some plays. But ultimately, Troy Anderson is one of my favorite NFL draft prospects in this class. This is our this is our first episode, so we're kind of walking through, man. Let me know in the comments. Do y'all want more film breakdown? Do you want more stats? Like, what, what are you guys looking for from these film breakdowns? But I appreciate y'all tuning in, man. Make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and comment below what you think of Troy Anderson, where you think he should go in the draft, and the best team fits for Anderson in the upcoming NFL draft, man. But I appreciate the support. But for right now, guys, the Blue Bloods are out. Mm -hmm.